evening, everybody. I'm Chelsea Handler, and welcome to the 28th Annual Critics' Choice Awards. Before we get started, I just want everyone to know that we are here to have fun and keep the vibes high. Yes. I know that I have a reputation that precedes me, but you should all know that I have been to two years of therapy, so everyone is safe now. It is an honor to be here hosting tonight after everything that we have all been through together over the past few years between COVID, monkeypox, the Don't Worry Darling press tour. It's been a lot. I'm just happy to be here tonight supporting the critics' right to choose. <laughs> At least someone still has a choice. Unless they're a female critic, and then it depends on what state they live in. This show is an opportunity for critics to celebrate some of the world's most talented storytellers and performers. The Woman King was a huge hit at the box office. Oh, yeah. Viola, I cannot get enough of you. You were so badass in this movie. After it ended, I wanted you to kick my ass. As part of Viola's training for the film, she was given a DNA test to determine the best workout regimen for her genetic makeup, which also coincidentally revealed that she is Nick Cannon's daughter. <laughs> Julie Roberts is here tonight! She's nominated for playing Martha Mitchell in Gaslit. The word gaslight, yes. We love you, Julia. Everybody loves you. The word gaslighting was actually uh, Miriam Webster's word of the year. And for those of you who don't know, gaslighting is when someone tries to convince you that your own perceptions of reality are wrong. Like when celebrities say they lost weight by drinking water, but really it's because everyone's on Ozempic. <laughs> Even my housekeeper's on Ozempic. <laughs> Kate Blanchett is here tonight. And Kate, as far as I'm concerned, you should win an Oscar every year just for being alive. In the movie Tar, Kate portrayed an iconic lesbian whose career is upended by her toxic behavior. And she didn't even have to host her own daytime talk show. A breakout year for queer cinema with movies, yes, with movies like Bros, Fire Island, Top Gun Maverick. Of course, one of the biggest movies of the year was Avatar, The Way of Water. And I don't want to say that studios treat male and female directors differently, but James Cameron was given a budget of $350 million, and Sarah Polly had to film Women Talking in a Barn. <laughs> but I guess it all worked out because they're both up for Best Picture. Women Talking is a powerful movie, but warning to men, women will definitely be talking. <laughs> Nisi Nash Betts is nominated for Dahmer. <laughs> Dahmer became the third highest viewed show on Netflix with a combined watch time of one billion hours, which apparently is the same amount of time we're gonna have to listen to Prince Harry talk about his frostbitten penis. <laughs> It's enough already. One of my favorite shows, Bad Sisters, is nominated. <laughs> it 
It's about four sisters plotting to kill their brother-in-law, which is something I have fantasized about doing for years, but could never get any of my siblings on board. Shout out to my family. And look, the cast of The Bear is here. Awesome show. They showed us how grueling and absolutely miserable working in the restaurant industry can be. And they didn't even have to wait on James Corden. <laughs> of course, everybody's talking about White Lotus. Italian sex workers would have such a big year. <laughs> well, I guess all of you did. <laughs> Kelly Cuoco is here, nominated for the flight attendant. <clears throat> Special shout out to flight attendants everywhere uh, because of what they've had to put up with for the last three years. These are just a bunch of innocent women and gay men <laughs> who wanted to spend a few extra weekends a year in Puerto Vallarta and then had to spend their airplane shifts duct taping right wing whack jobs to their seats. Shame on you. Michelle Pfeiffer is nominated for the first lady where she portrayed Betty Ford and she was incredible. She couldn't be here tonight, so instead I look forward to playing Betty Ford at the after party. There's been some solid Jewish fare this award season. We had the Fablemans, we had the Fleischmans, and that giant bagel and everything everywhere all at once. We've all heard a lot of nonsense recently about Jews running Hollywood, and I would like to say as a Jewish woman, so what if they do? Who cares? The French run bakeries. Italians run the mafia. And Swedish people run Ikea, okay? Stay in your lane. <laughs> Anywho, it's an honor to be here tonight to help all of you celebrate the brilliant results of all of your hard work, your talent, and your dedication. This past year, you have entertained us, you have moved us, enlightened us, and for the first time, Congress is more dysfunctional than Hollywood. <laughs> It even has more sex offenders, so we've already won. <laughs> Let's get the show started. Here to present our first award of the evening are the stars of the upcoming movie, The Gorge. She's an incredible actress, and he's the reason men think they can pull off mustaches again. Please welcome Anya Taylor-Joy and Miles Teller. <laughs> This year, entertainment has taken us on a journey from 1920s Hollywood to a fictitious island off the coast of Ireland, from planets occupied by blue people to a Memphis singer crooning about his blue suede shoes. We've ridden with dragons, cowboys, and fighter pilots, and we've gotten behind-the-scenes looks at public schools, kitchens, and Weird Al. <laughs> yes. It's been a wild ride, and we feel so lucky to have been able to experience it all. Our first award is Best Actress in a Limited Series or Movie Made for Television. The nominees are... Julia Garner, Inventing Anna. <laughs> Lily James, Pam and Tommy. Amber Mid-Thunder, Prey. Julia Roberts, Gaslight. Michelle Pfeiffer, The First Lady. Amanda Seyfried, The Dropper. Okay, and the critic's choice is, if I can do this, Amanda Seyfried, The Dropper.
thanks. Um, this is a great result. <laughs> um, it takes a really long time. Um, first, oh, this is amazing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with being able to like celebrate this show like this, um, and I'm really proud of it. Um, I want to thank the Critics' Choice Association because your reaction to what we made um, results in this, and that's. Um, um, and yeah, I want. I just want to thank my my crew, my dropout crew. I mean, I've, I've. Oh, it's just been such a ride. Liz Merriweather created it. She's a one of a kind. And Michael Showalter, who led us into production. Um, yeah, this is. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. This is really much cooler than I. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Have a great night. Thank you so much. He starred in the Critics' Choice winning film, Crazy Rich Asians, and will soon be seen in The Old Guard 2. Here's Henry Golding. Hi, guys. Now, some of the best films of the year came from across the globe. They gave us a glimpse of what life is like for people with different cultural backgrounds and outlooks on life. And yet, their struggles, they're familiar. Proving that in any language, great storytelling is universal. Plus the subtitles. They, the subtitles help a lot. I mean, now the nominees for the best foreign language film are... All Quiet on the Western Front. Argentina, 1985. False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths. Close. Decision to Lead. RRR. And the critic's choice is... Good evening, everyone. Uh, am I really, really given only 30 seconds? Oh, okay. Uh, 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 to, to all the women in my life, my mother, Rajanandini, uh, she, she thought uh, school education was uh, overrated and she, uh, she encouraged me to... <laughs> my sister-in-law, uh, Srivalli, who became like a mother to me. She always encourages to me to be the best version of myself. My wife, uh, Rama, uh, she's a costume designer of my films, but more than that, she's the designer of my life. If she's not there, I'm not here today. To my daughters, they don't do anything, just their smile is enough to light, light my life up. Finally, to my motherland, India, Bharat, Mera Bharat Mahan, Jai Hind. Thank you. All right, and the Critics' Choice for Best Supporting Actor and Actress in a Limited Series are Paul Walter Hauser for Blackbird and Nisi Nash Betts for Dalma.
I want to thank the Most High for this divine moment. I want to thank all the critics for making me your choice. <laughs> and when I decided to become an actor, I only wanted, I saw myself doing drama and the industry was kind, but they said, stay in your comedy lane. Sometimes people want to leave you where they meet you. And I did what I knew to do. I cried. And I told my mother. And I said, Mama, don't you think I'm a good dramatic actress? And she said, girl, I don't. <laughs> she said, but you can be. You find the best class in this town, and I'm going to work overtime to pay for it. Thank you, Mama. All you need is one. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Netflix. Baby, you picked me up when I was gutted from this work. Ryan Murphy, um, Evan Peters, and I, I share this award with Glenda Cleveland. On this night, we are both fully seen. And finally, to everybody who doubted this black woman and told me what I couldn't do, I want to lovely and humbly say, in your face! What's up? I, uh, I had him hold. It's too much stuff. I, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, I brought you a smash burger. Uh, so I just want to immediately thank the uh, Critics' Choice Association. It was really nice of you. Thank you for what you do. Um, that's about the nicest thing someone said about a critic in a while. Um, let me uh, let me thank. A uh, shout out to my fellow nominees. For the love of God. What a stacked category. I'm so honored to be in, like, the same room as you guys, especially to Ray Liotta, man. I love you, Ray. God bless you. You're at a much better party right now that serves way more food than they're serving here. Uh, I love you, my cast crew and the team at Apple. Shout out to my wife, Amy. I love you. I said uh, thank you for your patience and love. There's so many things you do, uh, some you don't even know you do. Thank you. A uh, shout out to my son Harris. The sequel is coming this April. Another baby boy. It works, guys. It works. Um, shout out to CAA, the the Death Star. Remember when we bought ICM? Remember that? Uh, Artist First, Lead Company, Jack Manson, Jillian Whitlock, Mary Klimek, and before I leave, I got to shout out Tarrant. Edgerton and Dennis Lehane. They are the brain trust and the heartbeat of this entire thing, and I would not be here without them. God bless you. Get home safe. From the nominated drama series Bad Sisters, please welcome Sharon Horgan and Eve Hewson. confident and hilarious. Thank you, Eve. I think you're pretty great too, but please focus because we're here to present two very important Critic Choice Awards. Titans of entertainment, amazing actors who steal every scene. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor and Actress in a Comedy Series. And the critics' choice for Best Supporting Actor and Actress in a Comedy Series are... Oh, no, you tore it. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> <gasps> Henry Winkler and Cheryl Lee Ralph.
Every mistake, every bad break, every no, every rejection in an industry that when I was 19 years old was quick to tell me there was no place for me. But Sidney Poitier looked at me and said, you are a damn good actress. That God could lead me, lead me to a moment when a young woman by the name of Quinta Brunson would look at me and say, Miss Ralph, I'm not sleeping on your talent. To the best cast on TV, Lisa, Chris, Stan, Tyler, Quinta. Thank you. As a supporting actress, I am supported well by an incredible crew, by an incredible staff, by incredible producers who put in the work each and every day. And to all of you watching here, come close to the screen and listen. People don't have to like you. People don't have to love you. They don't even have to respect you. But when you look in the mirror, you better love what you see. You better love what you see. Thank you to the critics. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. How do you follow that? I just want to say, I want your respect. Okay. I was so sure I wasn't going to win, I didn't have this shirt clean from the Golden Globes. I just hung it up. HBO and the critics and Casey Bloys and our godmother, Amy Gravitt, and our cast, Bill Hader and Alec Berg, two of the greatest creators I've ever met, and my wife, Stacy, and our cast and our crew at Sony. Oh, my goodness, I want to say to you, I am so grateful and surprised. <laughs> and if Julia Roberts is still in this room, you were more Martha than Martha. <laughs> I have 19 seconds left. I was given this award by the Bad Sisters. <laughs> I am going to behave. Thank you so much. I love what I do. And I get to do it every day. I have dreamt of this, and here we are. And here we are. Here we are. And Janelle, I do love you. Thank you. star Janelle Monet receives the See Her Award from Kate Hudson. And later, Aubrey Plaza, John Goodman, Elle Fanning, and Kerry Washington when the Critics' Choice Awards returns. When I was growing up on the mean, very unglamorous streets of Livingston, Nueva Jersey, that's Spanish for New Jersey, I used to fantasize that Goldie Hawn was my mother. And here's the bitch I'd have to get rid of to make that happen. She's nominated tonight for the best ensemble for her role in Glass Onion. Please welcome Kate Hudson. The Critics' Choice Awards once again proudly partners with See Her, the leading global movement for gender equality in media and entertainment, working to ensure that all women and girls are accurately portrayed. The stories we tell shape how we see ourselves, each other, and the world around us, and they have the power to connect and unite us. Tonight, we recognize an extraordinary person 
whose work on and off screen has helped advance gender equality. Someone who portrays characters with authenticity, defies stereotypes, pushes boundaries, and inspires the next generation to see themselves as they are, in their fullness, and in all their potential. This year's recipient is my friend, Janelle Monet. Before we celebrate her tonight, let's hear some inspiring words from past honorees. I'm on the edge of the, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. Being a woman is not about being brave or being strong. It is just about giving yourself permission to be the things that you already are. Our job is question what we depict, who we depict, and how we depict them. We've been witnessing a movement. I am grateful for the incredible women that have paved the way to every little girl who feels unseen and unheard. We see you. Just like I see me. There are so many ways to describe Janelle. Visionary artist, brilliant musician, inspirational, one-of-a-kind human being. I remember the moment we met on Glass Onion, Janelle, she walked down this staircase in this bright yellow dress, just exuding like goddess, regal energy. And it was like the seas parted, everyone's jaws dropped, and the room instantly fell in love. It's hard not to. But to know her, to see the care and dedication she nurtures in her relationships and in her art is to really fall in love with her. Not only has this music icon earned eight Grammy nominations, but, Jan <laughs> but Janelle's acting roles have included some incredibly badass women, many of whom were badass women in real life, like the brilliant engineer Mary Jackson in Hidden Figures. the determined feminist Dorothy Pittman Hughes and the Glorious. And then there are the original roles she delivered with such empathy and authenticity. Teresa in Moonlight, Marie Buchanan and Harriet, and my, my biased personal favorite, Cassandra Brand and Glass Onion. <laughs> but perhaps the true achievement lies in what Janelle has done for others through her activism on behalf of women, LGBTQ plus communities, and race equality. She was recently honored as the Suicide Prevention Advocate of the Year by the Trevor Project. She is the co-chair of When We All Vote and spearheads the Femme the Future initiative. She is an advocate, an ally, a warrior. Here's more about this force of nature, Janelle. See her award to the one and the only Janelle Monet. I love you so much. You are a sister, you are a force, and thank you for your time. I'm Janelle Monet, and my pronouns are she, her, they, them. But to her, act mother figure, like my character Teresa, to an abandoned LGBTQIA plus person, because the family they were born into won't accept them. I see you. To her, working in STEM like Mary Jackson, whose brilliant mind continues to advance the technology of this world, yet you're still fighting for equal pay. I see you. To the school teacher like Helen, risking your life every day to teach our kids, because we we still can't get gun control together in this country. I see you. 
to her with big ideas like Andy, who constantly has to deal with billionaire douchebags with no original ideas, parading around as genius. I see you. These are just a few of the characters I've had the honor of playing. And I've tried to make an effort in my work, uh, whether it's storytelling through music, through film, through TV, through fashion, through literature, to highlight the ones who have been pushed to the margins of society, who've been outcast or relegated to the other. This is a deeply personal choice for me because I grew up to working class parents. My mother was a janitor, my father was a trash man, and my grandmother uh, was a sharecropper in Aberdeen, Mississippi. And it's personal because I am non-binary. I am queer and my identity influences my decisions and my work. I've always believed that through storytelling, we are able to shed light on a human experience, an experience that most people around this world won't get an opportunity to see. And I kind of keep this, uh, this glimmer of hope in my heart that when someone meets a character like the ones I've, I've had an opportunity to play, you'd be more empathetic to their ex experience. More empathy will be given. You want to be more like them. You want to be more kind, less judgmental, and more eager to advocate for them. And there were many times, I, you know, to sit up here, I know I'm dressed up and, ah. Oh, all of that. But there were so many times in my life, y'all, where I did not see me. I couldn't see my light. I couldn't see past my circumstances. If you know my story, I wasn't supposed to make it out of Kansas City, Kansas and be here tonight. I wasn't. I didn't see the vision clearly for myself. I couldn't see my gift. I couldn't see what my purpose was supposed to be at that time. But thank you, God, so many other people did. They didn't give up on me, and they gave me opportunities despite my own lack of confidence. I was faking it till I made it. So to anyone out there like me watching right now, I just want you to know that I see you, but I challenge you to see you. Thank you to see her, and thank you to the Critics' Choice association for recognizing me i stand in the biggest puddle of gratitude and for making me the recipient of the 2023 see her award thank you coming up front lotus star aubrey plaza and last year supporting actor winner troy Kosser. Plus, John Goodman, Natasha Leone, and Angela Bassett here on the Critics' Choice Awards. I'm on the edge. These nominees have amazing careers and have always give, given inspiring performances. I was lucky enough to co-star with Brian in a reboot of Child's Play back in 2019. Remember, Brian? Chucky? <laughs> Brian, remember? But in all seriousness, I dream of one day doing a Chucky movie with each and every one of you. I'm looking at you, Judd Hirsch. Judd? Judd Hirsch? Uh, here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor. And the critic's choice goes to Ki Hui Kwan. to not cry tonight. Uh, ever since our movie came out, everyone has shown me so much kindness that it's hard not to get emotional. Uh, 
Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so, so nervous. This is so unexpected. Uh, you know. When I think about it, my comeback story could have been very, very different had it not been for the critics and the journalists. I was bracing for a very different reaction. But because of your generosity, I was welcomed back with so much positivity. Uh, you've not only helped audiences find our little movie, but you've also helped audiences to remember who I am. And for that, for that, I am so, so grateful to you. Uh, thank you so, so much to the Critics' Choice Association. Uh, for, uh, thank you, A24, Late Night Entertainment, ACBO. Thank you to the Daniels, Jonathan. Thank you to Michelle Yeoh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Stephanie Shaw, and our entire EAO family. Uh, and lastly, thank you to everyone who has reached out, your messages, your comments, Getting to meet some of you in person means the world to me. And uh, I did not realize how much I've missed you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Still to come, Critics' Choice Award winners, Troy Potzer and Jude Hill. Check two. Please take your seats. I'm sure all of you are enjoying your conversations during the commercial break, but now we're live. Thank you. Show, don't tell. That's the golden rule when it comes to conveying a good story. And these next nominees exemplified all of the intricate ways an actor can show just how masterful they truly are. Maybe it's a subtle facial expression that delivers more than words could ever express. Or a full embodiment of a character that's so over the top that you can't stop thinking about it. I mean, once you've seen Jamie Lee Curtis's hot dog fingers, you cannot unsee them. And I'm wondering, could I borrow those props? You know, you can see that sign language clearly from real far away. And maybe we can use that for, you know, a good happy hour with discount hot dogs, for example. And the, hold on, where's my envelope? I got to keep my hands free. Keep that in mind. One second. And the critic's choice is... Angela Bassett. Thank you. Thank you to the Critics' Choice Awards for this amazing, wonderful award. I'm deeply humbled. Thank you to my family, Courtney, Bronwyn, and Slater. I love you. 
as a girl who fell in love with acting on a school trip to Washington, D.C., watching James Earl Jones in a production of A Mice and Men at the Kennedy Center, I knew in that moment that this is what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to make people, to be able to make people feel the way that I felt, stirring in my seat as those actors drew me in, scene by scene, into their story. I, I didn't know what path, it, it, what the path would look like even after I got to Yale Drama School. I wasn't sure what might be reasonably possible. But oh, thank God for the giants. Black actresses with extraordinary talent like Ruby Dee and Cicely Tyson, <laughs> Rosalind Cash and Diane Carroll. It was their extraordinary work that showed me that there was a place for me in this business of show, especially at a time when black women weren't shown in a significant way oftentimes not really present on television or the big screen but thank god for them i'm thankful to my disney and marvel family kevin feige victoria alonzo Luis d esposito ryan coogler and nate moore our cast and crew i'm proud of the work that we did with black panther and now with wakanda forever we showed the world that we could create and leave a billion dollar box office success. And my prayer is that do that door remains open and the sky's the limit for other black creators and storytellers around the world to join us. Thank you to Chadwick for your love and light surrounding us. We couldn't have made history then and now without you. Thank you to the Marvel fans share this with you and thank you the other critics choice winners tonight include best original screenplay daniel kwan daniel shiant everything everywhere all at once best adapted screenplay sarah paul women talking best score Hildur Gunadon, Tom, Best Song, Natu Natu, RRR, Best Costume Design, Ruti Carter, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. You say they are called committed commitment phobes. That's very funny. No, 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 it's very funny. It's very funny. I think that's very funny. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I actually won for this category in the limited series playing Johnny Cochran. Wait a minute. What are they saying about me? What are they saying? That I'm not committed? I've been married for 25 years to Angela. What are they saying? I'm committed. I'm going to deal with this later. I'm going to deal with this later. I'm all hot now. Anyway, the nominees for Best Actor in a Limited Series or Movie Made for Television are, and the Critics' Choice goes to, Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Daniel could not be here tonight to to accept this award, so I accept it on his behalf, and it's going home with me. Thank you so much. He won Best Young Actor for Belfast last year, and will soon be seen in Kenneth Branagh's next film, A Haunting in Venice. Here's Jude Hill. After starring in Belfast, other young actors ask me all the time if I have any advice on how to stay normal and grinded in the biz. That's what we call it in Hollywood. And I do have some advice that I learned firsthand. First, stop calling it the biz. Your friends at school think it's really weird when you call it that. Second, ask your siblings if they think you're cool or not because you've been in a big movie. Spoiler alert, they don't. Lastly, do your chores. 
It might be big time, Nye. But you still have to pick up your underwear. And also, don't call it big time. The kids at school think that's really weird, too. Anyways, let's get to an award and a category I personally enjoy. Not because I'm young, but because the work is excellent. Unlike the critics here, I have very good taste. Here are the nominees for Best Animated Feature. Let's see. <laughs> and the critic's choice is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. on behalf of Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is writer, director, producer, Guillermo del Toro. Wow. Thank you so much. I, I just wish my mom could see me now. Um, I want to thank Netflix and uh, everybody back at Shadow Machine in Portland, all the animators who really brought this thing to life because without them, we would not have a movie. Boy, you guys are most, some of you are beautiful. <laughs> um, and I wanna thank this man here, Guillermo. Uh, now, please, please don't. Uh, to animate is to give an anima a soul to something that doesn't have it. What a perfect way to encapsulate Pinocchio. What a perfect way to tackle it. And I think that uh, when you tackle a fable or a parable of this uh, size, in Pan's Labyrinth, I did a new story that needed to feel eternal and old. And with Pinocchio, is an eternal story that we had to make new again. And you can do it only through passion. Unfortunately for all of us, through the rejection of every studio in town, so it took uh, more than 15 years. We started talking about it in 2004, but here we are. And I want to say that animation is the perfect vehicle to tackle big themes of the universe, of who we are. I'll repeat myself, I'm sorry, a few times. Animation is not a genre for kids. It's a medium to talk and tackle film. And uh, with patience, we will make it understood there has never been a better generation of animators and an industry more unprepared to tackle bigger themes. I want to dedicate this to my brother of 33 years, Jim Cameron. Thank you very much. Please welcome John Goodman. The man, the legend, the myth, the dude. It's possible that after all these years he's tired of the world calling him that. I can imagine the moment people beat you up, the first thing that pops into their head is, oh my god, it's a dude. Fun loving, laid back, eye on life, <laughs> easy going dude. Big Lebowski came out 25 years ago. And since then, people, well, a lot of college kids have watched it millions of times. Why? Because it's funny as hell. The camarader camaraderie and friendship we felt behind the scenes translated to the screen. And all because of Jeff. He set the tone. He was so committed and would deliver his hilarious dudeism so effortlessly, effortlessly that no one ever knew where Jeff ended. And the dude began. But as many of you know, you cannot define actors by the role they play. In real life, Jeff is only mostly the dude. There are other parts of him. He's a doting family man, serious craftsman. He's determined, focused, energized by the magic of filmmaking. A man with an insatiable fire in his belly to create good art. And he has. The last picture show. Crazy Heart, True Grit, Ron, 
Fat City, all classics, and that's just a drop in the bucket. He continues to play such a wide range of characters and tends to lose himself in all of them. Brilliant, flawed, rugged, relatable. He disappears into their quirks so seamlessly that we may never know who he really is. But what we do know for sure is that Jeff Bridges is a legend. It is my honor to bestow the 2023 Critics' Choice Lifetime Achievement Award to my friend, Jeff Bridges. Thank you, critics. Yeah, the dude, you know, from Lebowski, he would say, uh, this is just like your opinion, man. But uh, I'm digging your opinion. I love this. Thank you. What an honor. Ah! Hey, it's my dad's birthday today. January 15th. You're in this conference. Yeah, man. I wouldn't be up here without my dad. No, he's the reason that I'm up here. Um, I can remember uh, him, you know, loving showbiz so much, loving acting so much. And uh, as a kid, you know, I said, you know, Dad, I'm not sure if I want to be an actor. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, no, you know, I'm going to do painting, maybe some music. He said, yeah. Don't be ridiculous, you know. <laughs> Being an actor, they're going to call them on you to do all of those things you're interested in. And besides that, you know, you get to tell all these wonderful stories and uh, from all these different uh, perspectives of people that are alive. You know, this is a wonderful profession. He's so right. I'm so glad I listened to the man. And uh, just... The family that I grew up in was so supportive. My mother, uh, some of you guys might have met her. She was the best actor of the bunch. And then, you know, we got Bo, my sister, Cindy, those guys, so supportive. And now I get to be supported by my gorgeous, wonderfully talented wife, Sue, who's here with me tonight. We've been married 48 years. Three incredible daughters, Isabel, Jesse, and Haley. And uh, it's funny, looking at those pictures, and I got to admit, I checked out IMDb you know, to look at my stuff to <laughs> prepare for the night. And I said, wow, I've made a lot of movies! <laughs> my gosh, all these little lifetimes, right, guys? These actors out here, you know what I'm talking about. It's like we're these little families, you know. Uh, uh, families that are coming together to, you know, try to work together to make something beautiful, you know, pull off this one-time magic trick of making a movie and doing our best, you know. And uh, so uh, families, that's kind of what, what it all comes down to. Uh, I, I don't have time to list all these great experiences that I've had making movies, but I would like to shine the light on two guys who are very influential in my life and my career, and that's Peter Bogdanovich and Bob Rafelson. You know, Peter, of course, directed of our picture show, Rafelson with his great company, BBS. You know, they uh, produced it. And uh, mentioned in picture show, I gotta mention Lloyd Catlett, man. He's been my stand-in for 70 movies. Yeah, so talk about extended families. He's certainly in there. Uh, gosh. I wanted to say something else, and I forgot, and I told him not to put the thing up there, you know. <laughs> but telling stories, you know, that's, that's the privilege us actors get to do. We get to say some wonderful lines. 
One of my uh, favorite lines was from a movie, A Star Man, when playing an alien uh, who happened to be sort of a critic in a way. I mean, she certainly had uh, strong opinions about us. Uh, he said, uh, you know what I love most about you beings is that you are your best when things are at their worst. And I love that because, uh, especially in these days, we're going through some tough times, guys, right? And we could use our best, you know? And it makes me, uh, you know, it makes me want to come up with you know, telling the, the best story, live the best story that we possibly can, you know? And uh, together, we can do that. We can make something beautiful. So, uh, love you guys, all of you critics, everyone in the room. Great to be in cahoots with you. Be loved. Natasha. Yes, yes, Benjamin. Wouldn't you agree that there's nothing quite like sitting down at the end of a long day and having your favorite comedy actor make you laugh? Oh, sure, sure. In your house, alone, laughing. I mean, nothing better. You know, I respect these guys so much. I left my house. I flew across the country. I got all day dolled up just to stand on stage with this tall drink of water. <laughs> And, oh yeah, and hand them an award. I mean, they actually make me laugh. Well, if they didn't, well, no thank you. I'd still be at home where it's pants optional. Post-coital smoke break encouraged. <laughs> yes? I think it's safe to say that your house rules are slightly different than mine. Well, different strokes. In any case, these are the guys that had us both laughing this year, the nominees for Best Actor in a comedy series. And the critic's choice is... The tension is real. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's just like, the destruction. Know, he's working on the envelope, calm down. Jeremy Allen White. But, um, what an honor to, to, to be in this room. Um, I admire uh, all of you. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you to the critics. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to be standing up here. Um, but our, our show, The Bear, which I, I, I just, I, I love so much, it is a, um, it's an ensemble. And um, I love my cast so, 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 so much. Um, Io. Uh, Eben, Lionel, Liza, um, Maddie, Corey, Edwin, Abby, you guys are incredible. Um, I am so, so lucky to, to have you. Um, I feel like the luckiest guy in the world. I might, I might actually be the luckiest guy uh, in the world. Thank you guys. Um, my wife, Addison, I love you dearly. Um, Ezra and Dolores, I, I love you the world. Thank you guys so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's the only presenter tonight whose name describes what he does. He's the star of the neighborhood, Cedric the Entertainer. What's up? All right, good evening, Saints. How y'all doing? 
Well, you know, look, I am the king of pretending like I've seen the show. People, people, people be like, Cedric, have you seen Reservation Dogs? I'm like, yeah, the show about the dogs that like to go to restaurants? Yeah. Well, a, a roll, I would like a table for two at 7.30. Rover's the name. Thank you so much. Look, to be honest, it's hard to be the best at something. Because, you know, like most people just eye this stuff. I'm eye at golf. I mean, I look good at the golf cart. I got my swag on. But I'm not the best golf. I'm just eye. I can, prepare, pre, I can prepare dinner. I'm all right at dinner. I, it won't be the best green bean casserole, but it's going to be all right. You know? But these women in this category are more than just all right. These are the nominees for Best Actress in a Comedy Series. And they are... Christina Applegate. Dead to me. Quinta Bronson. Albert Elementary. Kaylee Cuoco, flight attendant. Renee Elise Goldsberry, Girls Five Ever. Tavery Jacobs, Reservation Dogs. Jean Smart, Hacks. And the critics' choice is. Yeah, that's crazy. Gene Smart. All right. Gene couldn't be here tonight, so I accept this award on her behalf. I. He is one of the stars of Best Picture nominee The Fablemans and Best Limited Series nominee for Pam and Tommy. Here's Seth Rogen. Hello, everybody. Yes, look at us. Having a fun time at the Critics' Choice Awards, aren't we all? I've never been to this. Do they always give two awards out at the same time? That was weird. Why do they do that? Are we crunched for time? Get another hour. It can't be that expensive. You know how I know that? This show airs at 4 p.m. on the CW. That cannot be pricey time slot from my understanding of how this all works. I'm not saying the CW is bad. What I will say is it is the one network to receive zero Critics' Choice nominations. You are saying it's bad. We're on your least favorite network. How did that happen? Nominate yourselves next time. You'll have one. No one will think it's weird. They'll think it's fine. If you were a normal viewer of the CW, this is a startling image to be seeing on your television right now. I might be the first Jew on the CW in history. Soak it in. Anyway, here are the nominees for Best Comedy Series. And the critic's choice is Abbott Elementary. Accepting on behalf of Abbott Elementary is show creator, writer, producer, and actress, Quinta Brunson. of God, lady. She just said me, but I wanted to bring the cast and producers of Abbott Elementary with me. So, um, one of our producers is in the bathroom right now, so he's missing this. Patrick, that's what you get. Um, we are so, so grateful. I will keep it short. Um, I, I, I feel like you guys heard me say I love comedy. I love 
making television. I love being able to make a comedy that people like, that's recognized and by the critics and by people at home alike. Um, I love that we get to have a really good time, but also bring light to the teachers in America. Um, <laughs> shameless plug right now, DonorsChoose.com is matching your donations. I see a lot of rich people in this room tonight. You can all donate and Donors Choose will match you for funds up to a million dollars. So you can do that tonight. Come on, Pat, he's back. He's back, Pat, you did it. We are so grateful. I just want to say thank you to, to everyone. I feel like we just did this. So, uh, but, but basically, thank you. Um, also, shout out to everybody else in our category. I love those shows love and I love comedy and I love being here. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> Other Critics' Choice winners tonight include Best Cinematographer, Claudio Miranda, Top Gun, Maverick, Best Production Design, Florencia Martin, Anthony Carlino, Babylon, Best Editing, Paul Rogers, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Best Visual Effects, Avatar, The Way of Water, Best Hair and Makeup, Elvis. This year's nominees for Best Actor in a Drama Series all play characters we may think we know, but who we love and who we love to hate are intertwined and constantly evolve. Here are the nominees for Best Actor in a Drama Series. Jeff Bridges, The Old Man. Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us. Diego Luna, Andor. Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul. Adam Scott, Severance. Anthony Starr, The Boys. And the critic's choice is Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul. Thank you so much. I'm going to waste some of your time now uh, because I have to. I have to take this moment, everyone. Uh, six years ago, uh, I was offered this amazing role by Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. I did nothing to deserve it. Nothing. Well, maybe the Ben Stiller show. But uh, it was a crazy, crazy risk that you took, Peter and a wonderful character that you wrote in Breaking Bad, and now we carried on in this show. Then I was surrounded by the greatest writers and the greatest cast ever! Okay, man, holy cow, look at that list. Oh, Michael Mando, Patrick Fabian, Giancarlo Esposito, Tony Dalton, Patrick Fabian, and of course, Ray. There's ridiculous that I'm standing up here with this and not with you and an award for you. You led the way, you were amazing. It, when you see me acting, okay, you're not watching talent. You're watching only elbow grease. That's all you're watching is sweat and elbow grease. And then standing around me is talent. And that makes you look good. So I want to thank, um, I got to thank my wife, Naomi. I love you so much, honey. 
Thanks for supporting this opportunity. It was very hard for our family. And I want to thank Nathan, my son, and Aaron, my daughter, who told me to do it. Or I would disappoint a lot of people. I love you. I love you guys. Thanks for this opportunity. It was great fun. Take care. Have a great night. Welcome back. I have been coming to you live all night from backstage at the Critics' Choice Awards. And I'm, I'm in what's called the talent hot holding room. And as you can see behind me, it's got producers, makeup artists, TV, news crews, and of course, the presenters who get to rehearse their lines before they go on. One is a star of the great and the nominated limited series, The Girl from Plainsville. And the other stars in Where the Crawdads Sing and the nominated limited series, Under the Banner of Heaven. Please welcome Elle Fanning and Daisy Edgar Jones. As actresses, we admire the talented women in this category. Their performances were nuanced, unexpected, sometimes heart-wrenching, and took us on emotional journeys we weren't always prepared for. And as fans, all we can say is we can't wait to do it again. <laughs> Ladies, thank you for your incredible work this year. We are truly in awe. Here are the nominees for Best Actress in a Drama Series. And the critic's choice is... Zendaya! So we accept this award on her behalf. <laughs> Please welcome Emmy winner Kerry Washington. yelling matches with your TV this year. They likely included the phrases, ah, just kill him already. Or she did that with her uncle? Or what kind of crazy ass waffle party is this? Moments like these are part of what made this year's shows the most compelling we've seen. Here are the nominees for best drama series. And the critics choice is Better Call Saul. <laughs> Accepting on behalf of Better Call Saul is director Peter Gould. I can't believe we won. We never win. Uh, you guys, uh, thank you so much, critics. Uh, you, you, you indulged this uh, very unlikely spinoff. And uh, you know, lightning struck twice because of you guys and because of our brilliant, brilliant audience. Uh, I have to say there should be about 200 other people standing here with us because the truth is that what we do is collaboration. It's play. It's fun. It should be fun. And uh, as we like to say, teamwork makes the dream work. We have the best, the kindest, most generous cast, crew, uh, writers, directors, producers, uh, I, I, anywhere. I, I've got to say, we finished a while ago, and I miss every single one of you more than I can say. Uh, I have to thank also uh, our friends at... Uh, uh, well, I have to thank Bob's publicist, of course. Uh, uh, but I have to thank our, our friends, our friends and allies at at, at, uh, at, at at Sony and AMC because they they stuck with us through thick and thin, and there was some real thin there. And it's been, my God, it's been what 15 years of this? It's crazy. Nobody gets to do this for 15 years straight. Uh, thank so thank you so much for that. And uh, I, I'm sure there's more I should say, 
and I'm running. Oh, I have to say, uh, I love you, Nora Doyle, my wife, the greatest person, the funniest person I know, our daughter, Fiona, and Vince Gilligan, wherever you are. What an incredible journey we're on, my friend. Thank you so much, and, and thank you, everybody. Uh, and I am sick with pleasure. Thank you. new CW series, Gotham Knights, which premieres in March, is Misha Collins. And from Superman and Lois, now in its third season, Tyler Hecklin and Elizabeth Tulloch. So uh, we were debating how to come out here and talk about these limited series. Should we just do the serious thing and talk about craft and method? Or should we talk about them the way we talk about them with our friends? But then how does one verbalize a screen full of weeping emojis? It's just difficult. Um, here are the nominees for Best Limited Series. And the critic's choice is... The Dropout. on behalf of The Dropout is executive producer and showrunner Liz Merriweather. making such deeply felt episodes of television and thank you to Mike White for not being nominated in this category. <laughs> um, thank you to Rebecca Jarvis, Taylor Dunn, and Victoria Thompson for their dogged and essential reporting on Theranos. And thank you to the fearless writers, cast, and crew, Michael Showalter, Naveen Andrews. Thank you to Amanda Seyfried for your explosively brilliant performance in Job Out and also in Mean Girls. She was amazing. You should see him. Thank you to, to my dear friend. I think I'm going to throw up just breadsticks. Thank you to my, to my dear, dear friend, Catherine Pope, for holding my hand for over a decade and for telling me to go to therapy. It's going OK. Um, thank you to Corey Wellens, Dana Walden, Hulu, Disney, Searchlight Television, thank you for championing writers and for doing uh, calls instead of Zooms. I really appreciate it. And um, thank you to my ridiculously hot parents. If they're looking for a third. Talk to me after. Um, and to the human pieces of my heart, Alex, Harriet, and Ira. And finally, to the whistleblowers, journalists, and scientists. Thank you for telling the truth. Thank you. We need you. Thank you. He's a Critics' Choice Award winner and the star of Andor. Here's Diego Luna. Buenas noches, qué placer estar en un salón con todas y con todos ustedes, con sus gérmenes también, se agradece. <laughs> a director is often compared to the captain of a ship, fearless, in command, with a vision of the horizon only visible from their perch. And uh, that's not enough. And I'm not saying this as an actor, but as someone who is part of the audience. What a great director brings to the table is a film that has a clear point of view and defends a perspective through commitment and honesty. That's when storytelling becomes personal and unique. That's what I really value in a director. Here are the nominees for best director. All right. It's already open. Um, okay. Best director goes to 
Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheiner, everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay, that's ridiculous. Hello. That she says our name. Yeah, it's not a mistake. Hello. Uh, thank, thank you to uh, all, all the storytellers and filmmakers that inspired me to become a filmmaker. Uh, you're in the same category as me. That's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> hello. Um, but you inspired me, and that, that means a lot. And your, your movies changed my life. Uh, other filmmakers out there who, who tell stories worth telling. So, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm overwhelmed, and uh, thanks for having us, um, uh, critics. Um, OK, so look, um, growing up, I did not think I was going to ever become anything. I had no idea I had something to offer the world. And I just need to thank the people who be turned me into the man I am now and turned me into the director I am today. My mother, who... Uh, not only inspired the movie, but was the first person to plant the seed in my head that I could be a director. She told me maybe the first Asian American immigrant mother to ever tell their son to go to film school. Um, and I said no. Uh, um, a couple years later, I, I changed my mind. But honestly, my mother saw something in me I never could have seen in myself to the incredible Michelle Yeoh, who said yes to our script. The first one gave us the performance of, her, of a lifetime and changed all of our lives. L last year, no one knew who we were. Um, and Michelle Yeoh changed all of that to my incredible wife, who saves my life every single day and makes them sorry. <laughs> the only time I cry is because of my wife. Um, and she's the only reason why I'm here, and she's the only reason why that I have the confidence to be the director. Thank you to the cast and crew. Thank you to A24. You guys are the reason why we're directors. Thank you so much. Thank you to the critics. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome Angela Bassett. As artists, we strive to disappear into our roles while also having a vital part of ourselves shine through. We mine our personal histories, tragedies, and triumphs to create performances that speak to the universal. Whether they were portraying fictional characters or a real life icon, the actors nominated tonight transformed into the new people on screen that we enjoyed while sharing a piece of their unique and beautiful humanity with us. Here are the nominees for Best Actor. And the critic's choice is... Brendan Fraser! Honor Critics Choice Association. Um, thank you. It was, uh, it was, it was Herman Belleville who once wrote that there are only five critics in America. The rest are asleep. I don't know what it means either, but I'm... 
I'm sure glad you woke up for me. Where were you for furry vengeance? Um, this, this, this movie, The Whale, is about love. It's about redemption. It, um, it's about it's about finding the light in a dark place. And I'm so lucky to have worked with an ensemble that is incredible. It includes Hong Chao, who should have her own movie based on every character she's ever played, and Sadie Sink, who is, in, I've been telling everybody that she's incredible. How, how who are you? Your, your talent presages your years. It took me 32 years to get here. And Ty Simpkins, you, you won the game ball every day. And, and Sam Hunter, you're my lighthouse, a writer. And Darren Aronofsky, I was in the wilderness, and I probably should have left a trail of breadcrumbs. So, but you found me, and um, like all the best directors, you merely just showed me where to go to get to where I needed to be. a guy like Charlie who I played in this movie in any way struggle with obesity or you just feel like you're in a dark sea thank you good night here's Ben Stiller welcome of the future the award presentation on which I am currently reading was written entirely by AI. <laughs> Very much hello. These are the nominees constituting the performance of an actress who is best in a motion picture. Who could wish for a better expert of talent? The special work this year is reflected in the proper journey of dignity with cunning. I am Pete Davidson, and these are the nominees. And this critic's choice is decided to be... is a poor second um look thank you i mean look best actress i mean it is extremely arbitrary considering how many extraordinary performances there have been by women not only in this room but you know um andrea Riseborough and tang wei you know penelope cruz i mean the list goes on and on and on um and i you don't stand here unless you're dancing with a director a director who asks you to do something that you think is impossible and you're terrified to do. So thank you, Todd, for the, sorry, I'm blind, the opportunity um, for your trust, for writing it, and um, for, the, for the extraordinary creative uh, conversation. <laughs> I can't believe I'm up here. This is ridiculous. I'm so old. Um, <laughs> thank you, and thank you to all my fellow nominees. You're, I, look, I would love it if we would just change it's like what is this it's this patriarchal pyramid where someone stands up here why don't we just say there is a whole raft of female performances that are in concert and in dialogue with one another and stop the televised horse race of it all because t can I tell you every single woman whether you know television film 
advertising, tampon commercials, whatever. You're all out there doing amazing work that is inspiring me continually. So thank you. I share this with you all. Good news, everybody. We kept the show moving and we kept the vibes high. And for the first time ever, an award show finished exactly on time. Another glass ceiling broken by a woman. It is my honor to present the final award of the night. It is the Critics' Choice for Best Picture. This year, through the magic of movies, we have been treated to everything from naval fighter pilots to blue people to a drunk guy in Ireland who gets so annoyed with his friend, he starts chopping off his own fingers. And here are the nominees for Best Picture. And the Critics' Choice for Best Picture is... Everything, Everywhere, All at Once! Accepting on behalf of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once is producer Jonathan Wang. This is absurd. Uh, you got to wait for Michelle. Thank you, critics. This is this is my friend Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, critics, for nominating a bunch of my, my crew members, who are a lot of my closest friends. Uh, we got to bring them tonight. Uh, so th thank you, our costumer, Shirley, and our production design team, our visual effects supervisor, our co-producer, uh, and our hair and makeup team that are at home, uh, our whole crew. Uh, we couldn't have made this without you. And thank you guys for recognizing our crew and nominating them and stuff, because that, that means a lot. Mo I, I didn't make this movie. I, I like, uh, made it with, like, 200 other insanely talented people. That's my speech. Uh, John. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Paul Dano made me promise that we wouldn't talk for long, so we'll go fast. Um, thank you, critics, so much for this. Uh, a lot of times, studios can be either critical or supportive, and we have the most supportive studio of all time. A24, thank you so much for this. We love you. I'm sorry, Michelle, as she said, the Golden Globes will kick all of your asses, so we're not going to stop. Uh, really, this award is to, dedicated to my dad, uh, a Taiwanese immigrant who worked himself into an early grave. And this is really dedicated to the Evelyns, the Waymans, the immigrant parents who would kill themselves for us immigrant children to give us a better life. This is dedicated to them. Thank you so much to Dan Kwan's mom, June Kwan, to all of our immigrant parents, to all of the direct, to Daniel and Daniel, to all of you beautiful people here. I guess we're gonna get rushed off the stage, Kwan, unless you wanna say, we're gonna vamp, we're gonna vamp. All I gotta say is thank you to Michelle Yeoh. Incredible work, incredible, incredible work. We gotta thank one person that's missing, and that's Jamie Lee Curtis. She's sick at home with COVID. To the ultimate cheerleader, let's all put our hands up and say, Michelle Yeo! That's our show, everybody! Congratulations to all of tonight's nominees! And shout out to the 600 critics who make this show possible every year. Good night!